Yeah, I hope everyone is fine, fit and fine. Uh, short introduction about myself. My name is Meghamala Pal, and I am working in editing in the marketing team. Also, I will be the host of this webinar. Now, coming to a short introduction about our company. It's a unified marketing automation platform, and our parent company is KTG Software Private Limited, which is a Bangalore-based company that started operation in 2015 with two major SaaS product platform, EasySendy and Aritic. So EasySendy is mainly focused on SME and SMB business, where Aritic is mainly focused on mid enterprise and enterprises. So uh, let's uh, talk about the companies which are using Aritic. Uh, around 2K plus companies are using Aritic and Easy product platforms. From January 2022, we are getting started deep into the India and Asia market. Coming to a short introduction about this Aritic Live, we are trying to bring professionals close to Aritic platforms with Aritic Lives. It is uh, basically an online talk show with uh, for marketing, sales and business development product leaders and others working professionals. The talk shows include webinars, on-demand webinars, webcast, podcast and live other live events from Aritic. Today's webinar topic is enterprise level ABM gifting and how it stands out from di digital noise. We have Sonesh Prakash with us, we will be taking through the top topics in details. So coming to a short introduction about Sonesh, uh, Sonesh works with a B2B SaaS startups and SMS as a virtual CMO, focusing on content marketing for generating top of the funnel leads. He has more than 15 years of experience in sales and marketing for B2B companies. I want to request Sonesh if you are going to at some point if I miss something from my end about your introduction, okay, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Oh, great, great. Uh, so, hi everyone. This is Sonesh here. So, I with I uh, you know as uh, thanks for the lovely introduction, Mega. So, uh, I mean, just to add on over there. So, I uh, you know I've got nearly 15 years of experience working with organizations, uh, you know, various organizations in sales and marketing roles. Uh, you know, like and the likes of I say, say Bank. Times of India, like a whole lot of stuff, you know, started various verticals. The last five years, I've kind of focused on, uh, you know, uh, uh, marketing initiatives for B2B SaaS and technology startups. Uh, you know, I've uh, again spanned, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, various uh, uh, sectors, including, uh, you know, renewable energy analytics to uh, workflow automation to enterprise uh, fintech startups, uh, IoT, and so on and so forth. So technology is uh, is is an area which I. Really Really, uh, understand and I mean uh, you know and SaaS is a sweet spot for me and um, now what we are uh, going to be talking about today is an interesting uh, you know uh, 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 topic about account based marketing and account based marketing gifting uh, which is something uh, you know which is uh, which is being used uh, very effectively by uh, a lot of B2B SaaS organizations and B2B companies in general. Uh, uh, so for B2B companies, especially who are, uh, you know, focusing on a niche set of accounts, ABM comes as a godsend of sorts. So um, should we begin the uh, the presentation, Megamala? Yes, absolutely. Hello? Yes, absolutely. We can begin. Okay. All right. All right. So I'll just uh, share my screen. Yeah. It's all being shared. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the topic of the for today: enterprise level ABM gifting, how to stand out from the digital noise. And uh, uh, let me start off with, uh, you know, a, a lot of you may or may not be aware of ABM. So what I've taken is I've. Uh, if, I've, I've kind of made this presentation in two parts. One is uh, a few slides around ABM and uh, you know how what is it used for and how it is you know uh, structured, and um, uh, uh, a few slides around ABM gifting as a concept and what companies are using it for. And uh, uh, so 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 let's start with ABM. Um, the classic definition of ABM uh, as we know it is uh, you know uh, uh, it's a focused approach to B two B marketing in which marketing and sales teams work together to target best fit accounts and turn them into customers. So now, while this looks like a textbook uh, definition, uh, you know, uh, 
most of the, I mean, some of the important points are ones which I've highlighted over here. So account-based marketing is a focused approach. So when I say focused, it's very important to, uh, the keyword focus is very important because uh, here, unlike uh, the spray and pray approach, which usually B2B marketing used to promote, wherein you uh, have a database of, uh, you know, uh, uh, thousands and millions of contacts and you start sending out emails or reaching out to them through various channels. And then out of them, maybe a few will uh, end up visiting a website or signing up for, for a demo and so on and so forth. And then from then on, you know, you, uh, you know, kind of filter it accordingly. However, in account-based marketing, in a way, you flip the funnel um, and uh, you start off uh, uh, from your uh, focused base of clients. For example, if you are a company which is uh, in the space of, uh, you know, uh, selling uh, banking software, so um, while your, uh, your uh, you know, so solution may address the needs of banks across uh, regions across uh, you know the si sizes and so on and so forth but you would have realized over a period of time that uh, you know uh, for you maybe uh, the top 30 40 banks or uh, you know prospects could be of a particular persona and for them uh, you know for 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 you uh, attracting those uh, those particular banks or those particular companies will be utmost priority so that is where uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, 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 concept like ABM comes into play to attract uh, an audience, uh, attract companies which are very, very focused and very, very, I mean, companies which are very, very, um, you know, essential for, uh, you know, uh, for uh, for your, uh, you know, for your business. I mean, you know, you have kind of made a list of few companies who you want to prioritize basically, it's a key account kind of an approach. So having this list and focus is very essential to begin with. And once that is there, uh, you know, you have to work. I mean, in, in this in this approach, marketing and sales team need to work together. Why that happens is because, uh, you know, since it's a key account management approach and it's it's a lot of, a lot of it is, uh, you know, uh, uh, driven by the content which sales teams are, I mean, a lot of, uh, in, in, uh, you know, insights which the sales team get from their interactions with these, uh, you know, key accounts. So if it's, let's say, for example, again, I'm, I'm just going back to that, uh, you know, company, let's say it's a, it's a company which is selling banking software and they have targeted a list of 30 accounts. And if there are already conversations in those accounts going, going on, so that's where, you know, uh, the insights from the sales team can be shared with the marketing team and marketing team can prepare content, which is very, very relevant for those particular accounts. And that's why it's very important that these two accounts, these two, uh, these two units work hand in hand. Okay. Okay. So broadly, this is uh, in essence the uh, definition of it. Now, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, how do we, how do we kind of come to know if our company is rel I mean, for if ABM is relevant for our company or an organization. So here's a broad checklist. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, uh, do you have a limited addressable market with a large average deal size? So in case, uh, in this is that this is one of the prerequisites wherein you can't go broad based with ABM. Like you know, you're tar targeting thousands and thousands of companies. That's not really ABM. You have a limited addressable market, maybe a few hundred cust uh, customers, or maybe in the beginning, maybe a few, uh, maybe 10, 20 customers who want to reach out and test out. Then it makes sense to, uh, you know, start off ABM. And they, each account should give you a large uh, deal size. It could be anywhere between fifty thousand to hundred thousand dollars or more, depending on the, you know the industry you are in. And uh, how do you do you value lead quality or quantity? Yes, I mean uh, this is also an important question wherein uh, for you in, in certain businesses quantity is more important than quality. Or there ABM may not necessarily be fit in. ABM you need to have you need to value uh, quality again. That stems from the fact that each client will end up giving you a lot more uh, money than uh, the other. So, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, and mostly such enterprise, uh, you know, uh, deals have large sales cycles. It could be three months, six months, or more. Um, uh, you know, our customers, uh, your customers, will demand a certain level of personalization throughout the sales cycle. When I say personalization, it could be uh, to the extent of you know the customers might demand proof of concept, or uh, you know, uh, I mean, based on the use case they provide, it could be a, um, it could be a, you know, a. a it could be, uh, you know, uh, multiple POCs done for multiple personas because, you know, you will be, when it comes to B2B sales cycles, there are multiple people whom you sell to. It could be the, you know, uh, the sales head, it could be the marketing head, it could be the technology head, and there will be multiple people involved in decision making. So that's why it, it starts, it, you know, it, you start you know, uh, making a contact accordingly. Well, my product may be the same, it has to be catering to different flavors, different audiences, 
and uh, different needs. So that's where you know the personalization becomes uh, of uh, is of is of uh, importance. And then uh, you know since I mean as I said that there will be several buyers involved in the personal history. You have a high potential of upsell and cross sell opportunities. That's something again uh, you know which which is uh, 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 so uh, what we are talking about is uh, uh, you know uh, since there are several buyers involved in the purchase decision. Uh, you will have a, you know, a, each one of them will require some level of personalization in terms of content, in terms of presentation as well, and that kind of adds time to the sales cycle as well. So, um, and uh, you will have a high potential. So, uh, in case you have a high potential for upsell and cross-sell opportunities in the same account, you will end up, uh, you know, uh, reaching out to more stakeholders. So, for example, in a bank, again, I'm just taking the example of bank because bank has multiple uh, departments, multiple. Uh, you know, businesses, business lines, and stuff. It could be um, you know uh, loans, it could be insurance, it could be multiple things. So, uh, which the bank is uh, dealing with, or the you know bank's distribution is dealing with. So, you can have uh, you know the software catering to multiple uh, uh, business units, and you can your pitch will be different to each unit, and then you can uh, you know accordingly prepare collateral and uh, you know outreach initiatives for that particular segment. So, um, and uh, sales focus is limited. So, yes, yeah, this is. The last two points is typically is something which I explained earlier as well. So broadly, if your company, um, I mean, it, in most enterprise sales uh, companies will check a lot of boxes. Uh, this thing, but let's say if, if if your company doesn't really have a limited limited addressable market, if you have a lot more, uh, you know, uh, if you are if if you can spread yourselves thin, if it doesn't have a long sales cycle, so I'm just saying that it may be not completely relevant for you. So a lot of uh, organizations can actually have products which are very enterprise specific, which are more uh, you know kind of uh, uh, very SMB focused or very very uh, you know mass focused uh, SaaS companies. For them, um, an ABM may not uh, be relevant or uh, may not be uh, you know kind of uh, 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 you know uh, cost effective as such as a as a concept or as a channel. So. Um, uh, this is something which I shared earlier. I mean, uh, traditional versus ABM panel, wherein typically in a traditional environment, uh, you know, you end up uh, reaching out. So when I say spray and pray, I use the word spray and pray. When you reach out to multiple people in the awareness side, you uh, some of them might generate interest. Uh, now this could be done through email, through uh, social media, through uh, cold calling, through a whole lot of stuff. So you'll have a database of maybe thousands or millions of prospects. And you know, once you do that uh, initial level of marketing, some of them might be interested. And uh, once the sales teams further qualify them, again uh, a handful of them might be interested. And then uh, maybe uh, you know a few uh, uh, single-digit percentages might end up purchasing it. Typically, if it's 100 people over here, you will have maybe one or two people purchasing it, right? So that's how the funnel works. And in here, uh, uh, you know, you identify those few people whom you want as logos, and uh, in ABM, and you start off with them. So, for example, if I know that you know I have on, only those top 20, 30 banks whom I want to reach out to, and I want to reach out to them uh, properly and more deeply, I then look at having those logos in place. Then, uh, the right stakeholders in those companies would be whatever you know, depending on the size of the bank or the company, it could be 10, 15 people or maybe more. And then uh, build up the network or you know database around those uh, contacts. So typically, let's say if I'm 30 30 banks and uh, maybe 10, 15, uh, or let's say let's say 15 people per bank. So we are looking at around 450, 500 contacts. So that becomes in a way your universe. And then you look at how you can engage with those people on mobile, on internet, social media, and so forth. Uh, you know there, there are various mediums you can use and uh, in, you know kind of engage with them. Uh, uh, and the whole and then in the end the whole idea is how do you make those few customers i mean once they turn into a customer ad advocates about your software as well they start speaking about your software and so that's typically what we are looking at from this perspective then coming to types of abm um, if you can i'll just see that yeah uh, so um, in this uh, there is abm is of primarily three types strategic abm which is one to one abm uh, wherein uh, you know uh, typically this is more for companies which already have achieved in a way product market fit they have a, a set of accounts key accounts whom they want to penetrate further and uh, you know uh, uh, engage more 
uh, build up you know more uh, engagement uh, by connecting further and also uh, you know uh, uh, maybe change perception so these are the objectives and strategic and build relationships and identify opportunities so this is primarily for companies which have a large enough sales force and uh, you know uh, uh, who have key account managers who know what's happening in those accounts and who can guide the marketing teams in creating specific content for those accounts and personas not just accounts but maybe personas as well when i say personas it could be the cio cto for that particular bank and what are the specific challenges of the bank as defined by the key account manager so you can come up with content around it now how do we uh, you know uh, so this is where the degree of sales and marketing collaboration is high and uh, you know the the number of accounts per uh, you know marketer is low as compared to the other this thing and top tactics so typically uh, you know one to one meetings is what you use as channel uh, we can, we create account specific thought leadership white papers and case studies and so forth uh, innovation days where you know you actually can call the customer to office uh, and uh, you know engage with them and show them what 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 come uh, you know what you are doing and executive i mean uh, set aside time of your uh, you know of the company's key uh, you know people uh, the, the the top brass to interact with the uh, stakeholders and buying decision makers and all and so on and so forth so top metrics uh, metrics again you know it will all be defined as how uh, you know so in a way it, it will be defined by how the uh, you know uh, uh, sales velocity as such because you know sales velocity as you know is a term uh, you know which you use to kind of ensure that uh, you know the the how how the how fast the lead is uh, moving into the funnel so from um, you know uh, from prospect to opportunity to closure i mean typically uh, the different uh, uh you know uh, uh, uh you know uh, different buckets in which you have uh, you know uh, you have structured your crm so typically you will uh, you will uh, one of the ways to track effectiveness of abm is how fast the uh, the lead is progressing in the sales funnel so that is something which you kind of you know you need to kind of ensure that you have that uh, visibility as you as you come as you uh, implement abm strategies uh, the second is abm light wherein you talk about uh, uh you know uh uh, uh wherein uh, the while it's it's a mix you'll have a set of key accounts you want to also develop new uh, relationships and uh, per uh, you know person you will have a slightly higher number of uh, accounts uh, this thing so in this uh, you may not go to the extent of having a very high level of uh, engagement like creating uh, uh, innovation days or you know uh, having your executives top level executives interacting one on one but still you will use one on one meetings email marketing and 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 things of like that and there are multiple other things which you can do um, especially from the content side and then uh, the last and i mean a lot of companies what they do is these days is look at programmatic abm because these two areas are typically for largest companies which have some already existing relationships uh, whereas over here a lot of focus while there is some existing uh, you know uh, uh, accounts you can further but then there is a lot of focus on also developing new accounts so here is where uh, uh, irrespective of the sales collaboration being low you can still do email marketing and you know some sort of social media campaigns for example now this the way this will work is uh, in let's say if you're targeting banks and you have a list of let's say 500 600 banks over there uh, for all these banks you may not uh, you know be able to kind of come up with each of them uh, specific content but at least you can identify like out of those 500 banks let's say you can uh, broadly put three four categories one is uh, uh, you know large banks one is cooperative banks one is uh, uh, you know uh, fintech or uh, so 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 forth so and accordingly you can slightly customize your collateral and use that to reach out to these guys rather than having content specific to that particular account so these are the ways you can create uh, and uh, you know uh, generate attraction with prospective clients based on the maturity of your sales and marketing teams and the company as a whole um this also is an interesting uh, uh, most of the content i've taken is uh, you know i have used references like terminus i mean and uh, you know itsma and and these are like uh, you know you can say gurus of apm uh, who in a way practically defined apm in some manner let me just in fact increase the size of uh, think it's not be visible otherwise yeah so this is something again uh, taken from one of the uh, you know uh, uh, you know gurus of abm and uh, they have uh, kind of defined at each level what exactly you can do i mean you know uh, let's say in the buyer's journey uh, when the person is moving from prospect to you know a customer what exactly what kind of uh, goals you should be having what kind of strategies what kind of content so for example so example from prospect 
the your whole objective is uh, let's say if the lead has come from an online uh, he has signed up for a demo or he's downloaded a white paper or so on and so forth so he you know he is uh, you know he's a lead and then you kind of look at how do we um, you know kind of uh, uh, engage with that lead through events uh, campaigns inbound outbound and so on and so forth and how do we uh, what kind of content do we uh, create for that particular person so it could be ebooks white papers and so on and so forth and how do we measure how do we uh, you know from lead to from a very very basic lead to how does qualify to a marketing qualified lead uh, what kind of activities uh, are we doing and stuff like that so that's something which we look at from a success measure so each at each stage you will have different success met- metrics and you will have different uh, you know uh, ways you can engage uh, with that particular uh, prospect in that particular stage um it also defines once the uh, customers also uh, already in place i mean what how how is it that you uh, look at increasing adoption of selling cross selling and uh, expanding the contract so these are this is an interesting way this is an interesting uh, you know uh, uh, graphic which you can use to uh, improve uh, your uh, uh, content marketing efforts while uh, implementing abm across the funnel so um how do we measure abm i'll just again so you measure abm based on um, you know your awareness uh, so so in in brief typically uh, if you are using a technology like uh, 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 you know for that matter aritic also has a, you know some some level of abm uh, you know in, uh, uh, management tools and there are other solutions also like hubspot terminus and so on and so forth so all these uh, technologies in a way um, help you i mean and and typically i mean even if you are not using uh, uh you know ideally in a perfect world you would want to have a abm specific tool but even if you are not using if you are tracking it uh, through uh, you know mediums like um, email you can actually figure out okay you know which accounts are getting better open rates and how you can you know do ab testing to improve Uh, open rates on their accounts or if you're using uh, you know a, a proper marketing automation tool, solution like hubspot or artic or so and so forth you can actually uh, you know get get to an idea that you know for each account what is the lead score associated when is a lead score typically you know uh, what is the engagement uh, happening on that account from various stakeholders so you would have defined you can define contacts you can define accounts in your system and you can actually see Uh, let's say for example uh, if if you're targeting 30 banks for each bank you can see let's say and if you're having let's say 15 people per bank you can see cumulatively what is the engagement of these 15 people uh, uh, you know on various assets it could be email it could be on the website and so forth and there's a score assi- assigned for each person uh, you know who's coming from that bank based on his engagement and you can based on that engagement you will get to get to get to have an idea about how many um, you know percentage of accounts or net accounts are coming on your website how many of them converting into uh, you know uh, qualified leads and so on and so forth and uh, what is the engagement is this number of uh, 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 you know accounts are engaging or not are they you know having a better session duration uh, so basically it's a mix of uh, 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 websites uh, uh, you know uh, sorry website data to uh, uh, con- to content consumption and so on and so forth so so broadly these are the ways you can figure out uh, uh, of how your uh, uh, you know marketing is uh, you know abm uh, is 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 turning to typical time period is uh, anywhere between 4 to 5 months to, i mean uh, from what i have observed uh, depending again from the your sales cycle and uh, you know how it uh, you know um, how it pans out so typically you can see that when you start off your abm campaign you you won't uh, achieve results overnight it will take some time and uh, depending on the maturity of your abm and uh, engagement with the customers it can take anywhere from 3 to 4 months at least to see some uh, uh, some some kind of movement in pipeline depending on because it's a very highly content driven and uh, high touch kind of a exercise which which you're doing so uh, uh, so broadly these are the things which you can use now what we could do is abm gifting now that you've got an idea that uh, abm is uh, something which you can uh, you know uh, use to target specific accounts uh, gifting is a concept with nothing i mean as the word says how do we ensure that you you know cut through the uh you know uh, the uh, instead of just using emails and uh, you know uh, uh uh social media and so on and so forth which are anyways being used and abused a lot by companies you can also used personalized gifts as a way to engage with your clients 
so broadly this is something which is this is you know this is a broad idea of abm gifting which is coming up and there are quite a few companies which are promoting this concept as well uh, by uh, you know uh, enabling you to come up with gifting ideas so sourcing those gift ideas as well as fulfillment as in you know you can target uh, you know, let's say uh, you have different gifts for different uh, level of people in the same company and you can ensure that you can through the platform uh, you can actually send gifts you can uh, see if the gifts have been received or not and what kind of engagement is happening post the receipt of the gift and so on and so forth so this is something which you can actually do and there are platforms now with that um now um, i mean so now what is in fact in the last couple of years in fact during the pandemic itself there's a lot of uh, interesting things which have happened uh, you know face to face interactions to online so the reason i'm sharing this is this is what ultimately is also uh, 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 because there's a lot of digital experiences coming to play how does it that you can break the clutter so because face to face interactions have moved to online hybrid experiences uh, ultimately uh, bet 25 many many interactions happen in digital channels uh, you know so so all these things what has happened is it is kind of uh, resulting in a lot of fatigue you are bombarded with the you know emails calls uh, you know back to back meetings and stuff like that so it you kind you've kind of you know you have a, there is a possible there's a high possibility that you might just get lost in the crowd so this is where uh, you know concept like gifting might uh, end up decluttering or you know uh, uh, helping you position yourself better so you can actually send gifts and uh, you know uh, uh, typically or uh, you know in ensure a interesting experience across the entire journey through abm gifting as a concept so for example you can you know uh, for for companies for people who are uh, you know at the uh, you know typically uh, uh, you know at the uh, Yeah. so this is something which is a uh, uh, top of the funnel kind of uh, you know uh, sales engagement um, yeah so when we are come when we were talking about personalized gifting we we uh, you know we also want to know how is it that kind of we, we can create we can think about what kind of gifts to offer across the sales cycle so uh, typical uh, you know buying process in a way will have these kind of uh, uh you know uh, <clears throat> uh you know stages and uh, uh in each stage like for example uh, uh, you know when if you are a b2b saas company or any company which involves uh, you know demo process then there is a you know uh, then there is a validation where in a business case being give uh, you know given and then ultimately it uh, leads to close so at each stage there is some level of you know gifting which you can look at uh for example it's a pre demo this thing then you can look at you know uh, i mean again this is a this is something which is taken from uh, you know uh, this graphic is taken from sendoso which is a, a gifting company and there's some they they do some good work in terms of you know suggesting gifts gifts across the buyer journey as well as uh, ensuring fulfillment of these gifts for their customers so they i mean they have interestingly defined what kind of uh, gifting size you can do across the sales funnel so right from small e gifts coupons uh you know uh, and so uh, vouchers and so so on so forth to personalized options golf kits depending on what stage and what value the account is uh you know uh, to uh, uh also sharing reports and gifting case studies and so on and so forth to uh, ensure customer education is happening along with uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, customer delight by the relevant gifts and then let's say once the you know deal is closed then you actually can celebrate with a bottle of champagne and so on and so forth so broadly uh, you know across the journey you kind of come up with different kind of gifts i mean depending on the engagement depending on the value of the account you can come up with ideas around gifts for your customers uh, and uh, you know for your for your various prospects and so on and so forth and one of the ways you can do that uh, kind of customization is also when you look at those that persons because it's a very personal thing you can actually look at their linkedin account and uh, uh, figure out uh, what are they interested in linkedin or social media accounts and if they're interested in a specific thing let's say if they talk about golf more or they have to talk about travel more and so on and so forth you can accordingly based on the budgets based on the you know value of the account you can come up with gifting ideas so considering that uh, you know um, this we are living in a world where in in understanding uh, the preferences of person is easier uh, because of social media you can actually do that uh, and come up with those gifting ideas as well um now coming with software so there are various software and also one of the is one of the most widely used software uh, in this space uh, and then there are reach test callus and also all of them in a way offer uh, 
uh, integration with uh, marketing uh, technologies of guys like HubSpot, uh, you know, uh, 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 Market Over and so on and so forth. And um, they offer uh, visibility of how uh, the particular gift has been, uh, you know, uh, I mean, if it's right from, uh, you know, when it's been sent to uh, how, how many of them have been received and uh, post the seat or the gift, what is the engagement which has happened. So all that, all that's something which is you can track along with the, you know, uh, the software, I mean, user, user software. And then uh, since it's integrating with your marketing technology stack, you can broadly see the engagement pre and post gifting as well. So um, this is broadly what I um, had to share around gifting. Happy to kind of, uh, you know, uh, as I shared, in fact, a lot of it, a lot of the content in this presentation is taken from some of the, you know, uh, major ABM gurus and uh, 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 software vendors like ITSMA, Terminus, and so and so forth. And uh, I would urge you to also look at, uh, taking a look at these websites for further information around this topic, around ABM as well as gifting as a topic. And uh, it's a fairly new, uh, you know, I would say in the fairly new industry and I mean, uh, as a concept, I'm not, I'm not talking ABM, but gifting as a whole comparatively. And I guess in India, there were not many people using it right now. Um, they're very, even if they are, they're probably using it in initial stages. Even ABM is kind of initial, very, very, very initial stages in India. Uh, uh, so I think uh, uh, you have to kind of decide uh, how uh, this will kind of, uh, you know, feature in your scheme of things and then take a call or if this thing makes sense for you as a you know as a business and uh, you know take it and then make this because this is going to be a, a quite an invest, investment heavy exercise when it comes to uh, uh, ensuring that your team is aligned enough the sales and marketing team is aligned enough you're creating the right kind of content uh, or creating the right kind of uh, you know uh, understanding custom good enough, well enough so that you uh, serve, get the right gifts for them and so on and so forth so yeah so um, broadly that was it hope you like the uh, session. Thank you, Sonish. Uh, it was such an insightful presentation and it is such a great learning experience for all of the audience who will watch this presentation. And also I would like to thank you, Honest and uh, Sonish, and it is really, really great pleasure to host you. Thank you so much uh, and see you on the next webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.